What's up future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the V60 in regards to BiPAP and specifically related to one individual alarm. Let's dive in. All right, now before I get into and start talking about this one alarm that is going to be the focus of this video, I wanna just kinda of give you a little backdrop as to what we walked in and found, okay? Uh, just talking about just non-invasive ventilation. This is obviously a screen shot of uh, the V60. Uh, this patient was in BiPAP in the ST mode, which means they can breathe spontaneously. If they don't breathe within the time cycle of the set rate, then the ventilator is going to give a breath at that set eye time. Otherwise, all this vent is doing in this mode is allowing the patient to determine when they want a breath and they're starting at EPAP of 10 and they're raising the pressure to an IPAP of 15. That's what the ventilator, that's what the V60 is doing. It's holding an EPAP of 10 and raising to an IPAP of 15. Now this is important because that means that the difference between these two gives us a pressure support of five. That's a very small amount of pressure support. So when I walked into the room and I saw this, the first thing I noticed is my spontaneous tidal volumes were averaging around 700 milliliters. Now, that's a good tidal volume. They were anywhere from about 600 to 800, averaging about 700. Patient was breathing about 12 times a minute, gives us a, a minute ventilation of about 8.4 slightly elevated but the patient's in the hospital it just been extubated the day before and so um, I'm not expecting a normal minute ventilation at this time a slightly higher one is, is okay that's where most of our patients are in the hospital now I'm thinking right now I have a blood gas we do not have a ventilation problem this patient is ventilating just fine lots of supporting data on that not just the blood gas but also the fact that this patient is needing only a minimal amount of pressure support to generate an effective tidal volume. Rate was 12, like I said, so I'm not really worried about ventilation. I am looking at this EPAP of 10, knowing that EPAP functions very similar to PEEP. It's essentially the same thing, just not on a, on a, on a ventilator with an endotracheal tube or a tracheostomy tube. This is a, a, a non-invasive EPAP or PEEP setting. This is what's going to, to hold open alveoli during expiration. It's gonna raise baseline. It's gonna help us to oxygenate more efficiently. So I'm thinking, well, maybe we have a little bit of an oxygenation concern here. We're only on 30%. So, eh, really not concerned too much about any of this. Ultimately, this patient comes off the BiPAP, goes to an AIRVO, and eventually is weaned quickly off the AIRVO because oxygenating and ventilating just fine. That's what we found. Now, what I'm talking about today, what I want to show you, and the reason I set this up talking about IPAP and EPAP is because you're going to want to remember these settings. Because when we go to the alarms, this is what we find. So several of these alarms could probably be adjusted, okay? But the big one that I want to talk about is the low inspiratory pressure alarm. It is in my observation that this is the most often misset alarm on the V60 during non-invasive ventilation. Here's why. This alarm is designed to inform you if during inspiration you don't meet the threshold of this alarm. In other words, we're going from 10 to 15 during inspiration. So you want to be notified if an inspiratory pressure is not able to be reached. Okay, well, let me give you an illustration here. Maybe, maybe it'll, it'll help clarify this. If this is what we're looking at, if we're at 10 and raising to 15 and coming back to 10, this is EPAP, this is IPAP. Remember, we were at 10 over 15. We want to know if there is a leak in the system that is not allowing this pressure to be obtained on the inspiratory phase. Now, remember where the lip was set at? When I say lip, I'm talking low inspiratory pressure alarm. The lip was set at seven. This is where our lip was. That means the alarm was set here. Okay, now think about this. 
If we are holding EPAP at 10, then on inspiration, we are going to be going up from 10. So in other words, this alarm right here will never go off because it is not set appropriately. Okay, Joe, tell us, how do we set it appropriately? The lip should always be set between EPAP and IPAP. See, so you want that lower inspiratory pressure alarm to be set at a threshold that will notify you if the inspiratory pressure is failed to, is, fails to reach whatever the threshold is you have this alarm set at. This alarm is never going off because we're already above it. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we changed it and we put our low inspiratory pressure alarm at 12. Now remember, we're 10 over 15, so now it's looking like this. EPAP of 10, IPAP of 15. So we got 10 here, we got 15 here, and we put our lip right here at 12. Now, when the patient takes a breath and the V60 gives that inspiratory pressure, increases the inspiratory pressure, or attempts to increase the pressure from 10 up to 15, if it fails to do so, then we will be notified because that lower alarm, that low inspiratory pressure alarm was not reached. And now we have a, a, an alarm that is actually going to be useful for us. You see, at the end of the day, you have to remember what your alarms serve a purpose for. They are your ears and eyes for your patient, for you, while you're not in the room. Now, a lot of talk about alarms. You can set alarms too tight and they can go off all day or all night. This is gonna lead to alarm fatigue. So you don't want them so tight that they're constantly going off. But do, you do want them set appropriately so that you are notified when something with your patient changes. Now somebody responds to an alarm. When they're going off all, all the time, you find where people stop responding. They're just like, it's been doing that all day. Yeah, that's not the point of an alarm. So, so adjust your alarms, tweak your alarms, get them to a point to where they are efficiently and appropriately set to, to aid you in your care for your patients, okay? And always remember that the low inspiratory pressure alarm during non-invasive ventilation serves the purpose of identifying you for a failure to reach a lower inspiratory threshold set by you. So always have it set between EPAP and between IPAP. If you're on five over, if you're on IPAP of 10 and EPAP of five, then you wanna go somewhere around eight. If you're set 12 over eight, then you probably want your low inspiratory pressure somewhere around 10. It should never be set below. So keep this in mind. I see this alarm uh, incorrectly set all the time. Probably 90% of the V60s and non-invasive ventilations I go into, I can find this alarm set below lip, and that makes it essentially not even an alarm. So I hope this helps. Uh, let me know what you think about this in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love to have you in the community. And always remember this at the end of the day. It's so easy to be average, so don't be it.